know you. You're that jaywalking punk anarchist. Jaywalking punk anarchist. No. Hello, this is the Radical Reviewer taking a look at The Lion King, a story of struggle and friendship and justice and revolution and rigid caste systems and knowing your place in the glory of monarchy. I figured it was poignant to take a look at this classic film before the live action movie comes out. So let's take a look at this old Disney film and see what it's all about. Well, the film starts off with traditional African music and beautiful wildlife imagery. Cool, cool. Circle of life rules us all, yada, yada, yada. Then we get this weird baptism imagery with baby Simba being presented over a crowd and a beam of light from the sky comes down and all the animals bow in subservience. This is some the monarchy is good and righteous and ordained by God BS. Then we're introduced to Scar, Simba's uncle and coded gay villain trope. Also, is Scar's scar like a birthmark? Or like, did he change his name after getting the scar, or what? And Scar says, If it isn't my brother descended from on high to mingle with the commoners. So, cool. There seems to be some class conflict regarding the inequality inherent in monarchy, which may be resolved in the film. I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, I get this white man's burden vibe from this discussion between Scar and Mufasa. Like, Mufasa is kind of coded white, Scar is non-white, maybe that's just me. We then get some father-son time with King Mufasa and Simba. Mufasa says, Everything the light touches is your kingdom. And Simba replies, All this will be mine? Everything. Um, cool. That's a messed up message. Yeah, all this property is totally yours by birthright, as it should be. And then Simba says, But what about that shadowy place? That's beyond our borders. You must never go there, Mufasa replies. So, yeah, fear and distrust those outside your border. What a positive message. Probably really resonates with folks today. We then get the lesson of respecting the natural balance. The lions eat the antelope, but... The lion dies and their body becomes the grass which the antelope eats. You know, circle of life. I'd be down with this message, except it's given in this Aristotle style way of the natural order of things. The, the poor people are naturally poor, the rich are naturally rich, everyone is naturally in their place. You shouldn't try and fight it or change it. And also, again, this gives me a white man's burden vibe. For those who are unaware, the white man's burden, based on the poem of the same name, is this concept that it's the job of the white man to help maintain order and help the silly, backward, stupid people of the world get it together. It's the white man's burden to keep people in their natural order. It's the Lion King's burden to keep the animals in their place, in line with the natural order. Then Zazu, the king's aide, checks in with the morning report which is actually just listing off a bunch of animal puns. I never realized that growing up. Then Zazu is made to stand still while Simba uses him for pouncing lessons. Isn't being a monarch fun? You get to assault the help. Then it's reported that there are hyenas in the Pride Lands. Oh no, not a refugee crisis. Good thing the violent authoritarian monarchy is there to put them back in their place. Zazu then tells Simba that the hyenas are slobbering, mangy, stupid, rapists and criminals and drug dealers, but some of them he assumes are good. Then Simba and Scar talk, and Simba says, You're so weird, and Scar replies, You have no idea. This is typically pointed to as the clearest coding that Scar is homosexual. Scar then tells Simba about the elephant graveyard, and Simba and his friend Nala sneak off to check it out. Then Simba sings some song about how he can't wait to be the absolute monarch and use his tyrannical rule to do whatever he wants without consequence. We then meet the hyenas, Bonsai, Shenzi, and Ed. Ah, I see. This is gangland. I can tell because it's a bad part of town, and also they are speaking in Ebonics, or B-E-V, Black English Vernacular. 
The hyenas talk about killing the king. And that's awesome. Dispose of the tyrant. Viva la revolution! Liberté, égalité, fraternité! Behead the monarch! But then Mufasa comes in to do some reaffirming of the unequal caste system. Going back home to lick their wounds, the hyena says, Scar, you're one of us. You're our pal. Hey, look, that's kind of cool. It's not all violent suppression by the lions. Like, someone is willing to open up some lines of communication and diplomacy between the lions and the hyenas. I'm down with that. The hyenas are asked to be prepared for the death of the king, and they chant, No king, no king, la na 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 na. But Scar retorts, I'll be the king. Stick with me and you'll never be hungry again. And we get some Nazi imagery. Well, shit. I thought we were gonna get a cool workers' revolution. But wait a minute, this is totally historically inaccurate. When the poor people of a country rise up, it's an anarchist, communist workers' revolution. The Sandinistas, the People's Army of Vietnam, the Zapatistas, the Black Panther Party, etc, etc. It's the middle and upper middle class reactionary revolutions that lead to fascism, like the Nazis, the Contras, apartheid in South Africa, the KKK, and the alt-right. If anything, History has demonstrated that it would be more accurate for the hyenas to fight for justice and equality, and it would be a group of lions defending the injustice who would adopt the fascist reactionary attire. We then get Scar talking to Simba, setting us up for the big famous sad scene. However, I'm left asking, who are the wildebeests in this situation? Like, the revolutionary hyenas are spurring them on, urging them into a stampede, but the wildebeests don't talk or anything. Do they just represent herd mentality in general? Do they symbolize the mob, the rabble, or what? I mean, here we have the monarchy about to be destroyed by the mob. This would be a great time to have some social commentary about democracy and revolution and monarchy and justice. But the wildebeests are just a voiceless mob with no goals or ambitions, and the death of the monarchy is played as a tragedy. So, whatever, I guess. Scar convinces Simba to blame himself for his father's death, and Simba runs away. Monarchy destroyed. Er, I guess not really. Right, Scar comes in to be the new king, and he states, This is the dawning of a new era where lion and hyena come together in a great and glorious future. Okay, cool. So, like, there's still a tyrannical monarchy, but it seems like some cultural integration and redistribution is going to take place. Cutting back to Simba, we're introduced to Timon and Pumbaa, the best characters in the movie. Also suspected of being gay, I suppose that offsets the trope of the bad guy being coded gay? And Simba and Timon and Pumbaa sing Akuna Matata. Just like the song Bare Necessities in Jungle Book, I can't help but think, awesome, peaceful commune living, happy ending. I get it that it's supposed to be about how it's bad to shirk off your responsibilities, but I feel like this laid-back, gift-economy, commune way of living invites solutions to the conflicts of these stories that aren't fully explored. I mean, if it were me, I'd end the movie here. Simba lives happily ever after with his peaceful, laid-back two dads, and Scar works on cultural integration and economic justice between the hyenas and lions. Everyone lives happily ever after. But of course that's not the story. We cut back to Scar's monarchy and the hyenas complain that Scar there's no food and no water and he replies that's the lioness's job and they retort things were better under Mufasa. I'm not sure what's going on here. What is it in Scar's policies that are causing drought and starvation? Like I guess it's supposed to be that Scar's kingdom is this dreaded welfare state where the lions do all the work and the black English vernacular speaking hyenas are just welfare queens. But even if that were the case, the hyenas said before that they were struggling for food under Mufasa's reign. So what's going on here? Having equality and integration causes droughts and food crises? I know anti-communist propaganda would love for you to believe such a thing, but the facts just don't bear out. Then, while out hunting, Nala meets up with Timon, Pumbaa, and Simba. I love how Timon points out the ridiculousness of Nala trying to eat Pumbaa and then just acting like nothing's wrong. Then Nala states that Scar let the hyenas take over the Pride Land. Everything is destroyed. There's no food, no water. 
Simba, if you don't do something soon, everyone will starve. Wow, the hyenas are ruining everything? This is some refugee crisis great replacement BS. Like, I already explained that the hyenas were going hungry before, so obviously the old tyrannical monarchy wasn't working for everyone. Then a revolution happens and some economic justice and multiculturalism is attempted, and now everyone's starving? That's not how that works. Then Rafiki, the spiritual guide, shows up and shows Simba that actually the monarchy is good and pure and natural and God-ordained and so he's got to go back to his rightful place as king. And Simba talks to his dead dad's ghost who says, You must take your rightful place in the circle of life. Remember who you are, the one true king. Remember the caste system, Simba. Remember the monarchy. This revolution, this economic equality is getting out of hand. You must resegregate the hyenas, Simba. You must reinstate the hierarchy. Simba returns to see that everything's ruined. Damn equality always causing droughts and mass starvation, am I right? Simba confronts Scar, who confesses that he killed Mufasa. Down with the monarchy. Then the hyenas attack Simba, and the lions attack the hyenas, and Timon and Pumbaa get in on it, and Rafiki comes out of nowhere, and he starts fighting. It's a regular ballroom blitz. Ballroom blitz. Ballroom blitz. But this is cool. The people are coming together. A glorious people's army fighting for the people's revolution to reinstate absolute monarchy? Wait, what? Scar blames the hyenas for everything, and the hyenas turn on Scar. And now that the holy ordained monarchy is restored and the evils of redistribution and cultural mixing of hyenas and lions is put to an end, the rain comes back and puts out the fire and plant life grows back and the animals come back and cultural mixing and equality is bad, segregation and hierarchy and monarchy are good. Um, wow, what a crock of shit. Conclusion. Well, for one thing, where are the Africans? I suppose after movies like Song of the South, Disney wanted to be careful about how they portray race. And just like they decided to get rid of all the Africans in Tarzan to avoid making yet another racist Tarzan movie, I suppose for them it just made sense to have an Africa with no people in it. But hey, what's another SJW calling everything racist? To be honest, more than the peopleless Africa, and more than having the indigent outcast hyenas speaking in BEV, I have a problem with the way the film portrays cultural outsiders. In the end, it's a messed up story about the supposed dangers of immigration and economic equality, and the innate glory and goodness of rigid hierarchical monarchy. Anyway, thank you my wonderful patrons for making this happen. Thank you Camille Danaher. Diogenius Bull, Edward Cruz, Emmanuel Visconcelos Torres, Jiggly Puffer, Cali, Linux Powered Communism, LS, Mad Blender, Para Pinguim, My Fake Name, Oded Sayer, Oletino de Bui, PD Morin, Paint Eater, Red Platius, Reese, Spencer Clark, Susie O, The Fool, and Tony Harris. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash radical reviewer. And if you're interested in radical theory, looking for a book recommendation or whatever, you can get your radical reviews here with the radical reviewer. Thanks for watching. Oh, and I'm aware that this story is based on some dumb Shakespeare play and Kimba the White Lion. I, I didn't mention that for whatever reason. Okay, bye.